Welcome to this session. Uh, in the previous session, we talked about phase frequency detector whose average output voltage was proportional to the phase error and in the presence of frequency error also the average output voltage of PFT has the correct sign for the given frequency error. Okay. Now, there are other uh, blocks which uh, can also detect the frequency and these blocks are other methods you can say for frequency acquisition. These are digital frequency detectors. Okay. You can ask a question why do we need that? Well, we know uh, that the phase detectors like XOR gate base or SR latch base phase detectors, if you think about it, they are quite simple as compared to your uh, PFT based. Okay? PFT uses two D flip flops, one NAND gate, XOR gate, gate PD uh, just uses one XOR gate. So, sometimes you would like that uh, you can use that phase error detector, but in order to avoid the problems in the presence of frequency error, you need a frequency detector separately. So, first where it will be used? Well, you can have uh, a dual loop PLL where you have the phase detector, all the phase detectors which we have talked so far uh, with a loop filter, let us say LF1 and then that controls the VCO. I will tell you where I am, why I am using the plus sign. Well, you have a VCO and this is one loop. Then in another case, what you can do is you can have a separate frequency detector FD. You can have another loop filter depending on your loop requirement LF2 and this is going to add to the control voltage. The output of the VCO will go to the frequency detector okay? and the reference goes to both. So, this is your reference, this is your out. Okay? Uh, you have uh, FD is here, FD is frequency detector. Okay? Uh, this is your control voltage. Your control voltage is coming from two loops. One is phase detector loop and the other is uh, frequency, other is with the frequency detector loop. This loop where you normally correct the phase error, normally you correct the phase error is called as PLL loop, okay? phase lock. Do not think that okay, in case of phase lock loop, we will not change the frequency. Well, it, and then it is all, it's also changing the frequency of the oscillator. But at any given instant of time, we are measuring the phase error between the reference and the output signal. Whether that phase error is coming because of the frequency error or because of phase error itself, that is not, uh, that is not taken into account. The only thing which is taken into account is what is the phase error right now. You have phase error due to some phase uh, change in the loop or because of the frequency error that is immaterial. In the other case where you have the frequency detector loop, here you do not worry about the phase error, you actually worry about only the frequency error. Okay? So, this loop is called as frequency lock. FLL. So, one is PLL, other is FLL. Both these loops have their own function. In the PLL loop, you will correct for the phase error. In the FLL loop, you will correct for the frequency error. If you are using both these loops, then you can use XOR base PD without worrying about the frequency locking. Okay? Your frequency will, uh, we, frequency locking will take care of by the frequency lock loop. The Important point here is that the con VCO is controlled by both FLL 
and PLL. Now this is a problem. So it is like you are having uh, one block which is controlled by two different loops. So the two loops should control it in such a way that they do not oppose each other. Okay. If the frequency locking loop is trying to correct for the free, uh, trying to increase the frequency at the same time, if your PLL starts reducing the frequency, uh, right, it will create a uh, bigger problem. So, in general, what we do is FLL loop, FLL has very low bandwidth compared to PLL. Right, uh, you can design as per your requirements, but uh, you have option here to correct for the frequency separately and for the phase error separately. Now, given the need for such frequency detectors, where I am only worried about the frequency, not the phase error, there are a couple of options. First, let me just write frequency detector. Okay. The first one is counter based frequency error detector. So, what is this counter based frequency error detector? Well, it is simple. Uh, so, you have F D and the output, let us treat this output as a digital output. This is R and V. Okay. So, somehow the output of the F D should reflect the frequency error. So, the way you can do is you can have a counter okay you can feed v signal to the counter and at the output of the counter you have another block which is clocked by r okay so every rising edge of uh, r you can actually add the value, you can give the value of count, p count. There is some logic here now, right. Out at the output of the logic, you will get the frequency error. How? So, if I have my reference clock like this, okay, and one easiest way uh, to find the frequency error is, I am going because R acts as a reference. So, if I have my V clock, I just keep on counting. So, here is just an example. Okay. So, if you look at it, in one reference period, I will check how much I have counted. So, one reference period, I am going to count the rising edge for let us say. So, at every rising edge of the V signal, you increment the count by 1. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, in one reference period, I because I was counting rising edge, so I counted in one reference period, the count value is 10. 10, right? So, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, count value is 10. So, approximately you can say 1 TR is equal to 10 times TV. Now, you will say that okay, uh, it is not 10 times TV because the whole cycle is not included in the reference period. Well, that is the error which you will have to deal with. Okay? You cannot avoid that error. If that so, it is like if you look at it, it is not 10, it is actually uh, you can say 9.5, right. So, this 0.5 times T v or the v, uh, v period is the error which you may anyways have. So, if someone wants me to find the frequency of the V signal, well from here my estimated output frequency. F out is equal to your 1 over T v, which I can say T v is T r by 10. So, that is 10 by T r, which is 10 F r. You can estimate it. 
right. So, in this way you will know what frequency error you have, right. Now, here the thing is we are counting only with respect to one reference period. Sometimes you will see in one reference period we are not going to get uh, more accuracy. What it means is if you look at it in case it will be easier to understand from here fr by fv in our previous example was actually 1 by 9.5 fv was 9.5 times larger than fr which means that if I take 2 by 19 right which is your tv by tr. So, 2 times the reference period is equal to 19 times tv period. So, if I happen to take 2 reference periods and count in 2 reference period I will be counting 19 times the tv periods and then if the count after 2 reference cycles happens to be 19 then my estimate of the output for, uh, estimate for the v frequency or uh, the v signal will be more correct right. So, as you increase your time period for counting your estimate for the frequency error will uh, frequency will also improve. So, in order to do that what we uh, can do is we can actually improve our counting. So, here you see another counter based uh, uh, frequency error detector first what I will do is I will on the reference signal I will add a reference clock divider. So, when I have a reference clock divider by 2 power n 1, then if I have a reference period T r, the period of this particular output clock is going to be 2, 2 power n 1 times T r. So, you increase your counting period. Then you take a counter right here you are counting v signal and you make it like a n 2 bit counter. What does n 2 bit counter means that the maximum count value which you are going to have here is 2 power n 2 minus 1 that is the maximum counting. You, say you are doing a binary uh, uh, counting here. So, it is like you will uh, this is going to be uh, like counted with the help of a an accumulator digitally. So, you will define the number of bits which are used in the counter. So, when I say it is n 2 bit counter it means the maximum count value this particular block can have is 2 power n 2 minus 1. Now, what we are going to do is we feed these two signals to a logic ok. And here we have a uh, one circuit called RED which is rising edge detector ok. RED is rising edge detector ok. So, here what you are going to do is whenever you get a rising edge right you actually generate a pulse here. So, these pulses are going to be generated at the rate 2 power n 1 times T r and whenever you get the rising edge detector high you pass V count signal to the logic. So, whenever you get this you pass V count signal to this logic and then between 2 power n minus you will look at the previous count value and you will look at the current count value. So, you can say V count of some n times 2 power n 1 T r this is the count value I am having minus V count of n minus 1 the previous time 2 power n 1 times T r this is the actual count value which you registered in one period here ok. So, output frequency or output time period is effectively equal to this is the count value in one reference period. So, you can say it is actually a, a digital count. So, I can write this digital count into 
T V period is equal to 2 power n 1 times T r. Okay. So, from here we can actually calculate our F v which is 1 over T v as delta v count divided by 2 power n 1 times T r. Okay. So, you can calculate the frequency you know if you have the frequency error or not and based on that you can uh, correct in the frequency locked loop. Okay. We will look at uh, different uh, implementation for the frequency error detector and the phase error detectors in due course. Okay. But these are the ones which uh, the phase error detectors uh, and the frequency error detectors which we use commonly. Right. Circuit level implementation will be seen later. Thank you.